G'day you curious bunch of health fanatics. If you are here, it means you are interested in health and longevity, so let's get straight into it. Vascular aging is when blood vessels get old and begin to shrink, cutting off the blood supply to organs such as the brain, skin, and even muscles. As an example, muscles can shrink during aging, and it's a reason why old people are often skinny and frail. Muscles require large amounts of oxygen and nutrients to function, and if your capillaries are slowly disappearing and cutting off blood, which carries the oxygen and your nutrients, then your muscles begin to shrink. It is the same with all your other organs as well, such as the brain. Imagine what happens to the brain as the blood and oxygen supply slowly withers away during old age. Your brain is gonna shrink, as well as possibly leading on to things like forgetfulness, clumsiness, and even worse, maybe neurological diseases, such as Alzheimer's, that induce early mortality. A coenzyme called nicotinamide adenine denucleotide, or NAD, is also paramount in blood flow and blood vessel growth. Age-related muscle loss is known as sarcopenia and, and is an indicator of low NAD levels. NAD has also been shown to improve blood flow and the creation of new blood vessels to various tissues. Activities such as exercise hold many benefits and cannot be underrated. But even exercise is at the mercy of our body's biochemistry and, com and cannot completely prevent the onset of muscle loss as we age. However, science delivers profoundly here and it appears science can reverse the loss of blood vessels throughout the body with NAD. I'll link to a video on NAD at the end of this video. The principle of muscle loss through vascular aging can be and should be applied to all parts of the body, including all major organs, including brain and skin. I rarely promote vitamins for longevity, but vitamin K2 has some interesting qualities. As we age, there can be calcification in connective tissues, which are implicated in pathologies such as cardiovascular disease and osteoarthritis, which are highly common amongst the aging population. Vitamin K appears to inhibit vascular cal calcification by assisting a specific group of proteins to ensure that calcium is delivered to the correct places, such as bone and not our arteries. Note that vitamin K1 resides mostly in the liver, whereas vitamin K2 is system-wide and circulates around much of the body. This means that you could consider K2 the calcium vacuum cleaner for the inside of the arteries. This does not mean eat greasy food and, and simply supplement with K2. You will always need to take care of your diet, but it is great to know that calcification has solutions. And just to complicate things further, there are numerous types of K2 on the market, though you should target the type called monaquinone or MK7. MK7 is also found in a Japanese dish called natto, so worth keeping that in mind next time you are choosing sushi or noodles. From here, I will start referring to K2 as MK7. So what else is it good for? MK7 has been implicated in lowering inflammatory markers, offers protection against free radicals, controls calcium delivery to correct tissues, reduces arterial stiffening, effective in the prevention of osteoporosis. But here is the doozy. It is 10 to 100 times more powerful than any other known free radical scavenger. Do you smoke? Probably not if you are watching my channel, but if you live a life where free radicals are running rampant in your biology for whatever reason, then this is a compound for you. And note, one final study showed that by taking just 375 micrograms, that's not milligrams, for one year prevented any loss in bone density, which is huge news for those that may have osteoporosis run in their family. And there was also a 60% reduction in fractures in older people when taking it. And some further claims found in the literature was that 10 micrograms per day reduced diabetic risk of up to 7% and 360 micrograms daily of MK7 reduced calcification inside renal kidney arteries. And an in vitro study, studies performed in the lab, was that K2 prevented growth and metastasis of various cancer cell lines. So do not let your local health food shop uh, sell you another type of K2. Those other types either do not get absorbed, do not stay as long in the blood, or they simply do not perform as well as MK7. 
I've done the research for you, so do not waste your money or time being sold junk. The recommended dose, well, some countries say 50 micrograms. Other countries recommend 600 micrograms daily. Me personally, with heart disease and osteoporosis in my family, coupled against my plant-based diet and weight training, I will aim for around 300 micrograms per day. And I will remind you again that it is not uh, milligrams, but micrograms when dosing. But always chat with your doctor first, especially if you use the blood thinner, Warofin. Now, astaxanthin is also worth considering, as it showed in a double-blind placebo trial that astaxanthin reduced oxidation of fatty acids, which is believed to be the main culprit in heart disease. Calorie restriction has also shown benefits to fight heart disease. So um, do your best to limit salt and animal proteins, including animal fats, as cooked meats contain cancer-causing polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are carcinogenic. Meat also contains methionine that goes on to make homocysteine. Note, high homocysteine levels induce heart, induce heart attack, stroke, blood clots, etc. Meat also raises levels of TMAO, a molecule which I spoke about in my video about the microbiome, and I'll link to that at the end of this video. Make sure you use some apple cider vinegar daily as it helps fight alkalosis or the stiffening of tissues. Maintain a healthy weight. This is easy to do and I'll link my video on how to get rid of dad bods at the end of this video as well. You also want your resting heart rate to be under 60 beats per minute for good arterial health. And you want your arteries dilated, not constricted. Um, and stress causes arterial constriction. An amino acid called L-arginine has an important task to increase nitric oxide inside the human body. So nitric oxide is important for arterial dilation, which means better blood flow, less heart or circulation problems. So this is just data, not medical advice. Always chat with your doctor first about anything you see online. And don't forget to subscribe and smash that thumbs up button. And visit my website, scienceofaging.life. And if you don't visit, face the consequences of your actions. As always, stay young and stay vibrant.